Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. In this next installment of our Basics for Beginner series, we're going to talk about the thermostatically controlled air cleaner. So if you've ever wondered what yours does, or maybe you're having some problems with it and you want to figure out how it works, stay tuned because in the next five minutes, I'm going to lay out everything you'll need to know. Let's jump right in and get started. All right, so let's start off with explaining what a thermostatically controlled air cleaner actually does. Now, this is the device that's used to heat up the air coming into your intake manifold or carburetor uh, a little bit faster and to get it warmer faster. Now, why would you want that, you might ask yourself. Well, for those of you that saw my last video about the early fuel evaporative system, and I'll include a link up top for you that haven't, uh, you'll know that air and fuel really don't mix well below about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, when fuel passes through the carburetor and into the air flowing through the air horn into the intake manifold, you need it to mix as well as possible. Now, fuel vaporizes as it passes through the carburetor, but when it hits cold air, it doesn't want to atomize. And the best way I can describe this is think of the finest mist that you can possibly imagine, it's more than that. So when you achieve that atomization, the air and fuel are fully mixed. They pass into the intake manifold, into the combustion chambers, and you get the best burn and extract the most energy that you can out of that mixture. But when they don't mix well, you wind up getting raw fuel pooling along your intake runners, and you need to keep your carburetor running richer than it needs to be by extending the choke time further than you should have in order to compensate for that lack of a mixture. So what the thermostatically air controlled air cleaner actually does is draw some hot air that passes over the exhaust manifolds which heat up very quickly when you start your car, draws it into the air cleaner, into the carburetor, and then it meets that fuel and allows the fuel and the air to mix a lot better and a lot faster. That's the purpose of this system. It's a very simple system. It only contains a few components, but when things aren't running correctly or they've been disconnected, you may experience some cold drivability problems, especially right out of the gate uh, after you start your car and first pull off. So, in the next part of this video, I'm going to show you the components of this system, and then after that, we'll run through a little troubleshooting. So let's take a look and see what we're working with. All right, so here we have a somewhat typical air cleaner out of a 1980s General Motors vehicle. This one happens to be a dual snorkel. It has an additional snorkel on the passenger side, but for our purposes, we'll just ignore that for now. So. The thermostatically controlled air cleaner is made up of several parts. First being the actual air cleaner unit itself and the valve. Inside the valve, if you look up your snorkel, you'll see a butterfly valve that when closed or pushed down in the front will draw warm air up the stovepipe. The air first passes through or over the uh, exhaust manifold up the stovepipe and into a hole located at the bottom of the cleaner. <clears throat> we'll then enter the air cleaner. So we have our main unit with our valve right here. The next piece is the actual bimetal temperature strip or switch that controls the valve itself. Vacuum will Enter the system through the vacuum hose, hit the valve. When the valve is cold, the valve is open. It will then allow vacuum to pass up this second hose and activate the actual valve inside the air cleaner itself. That's it. Those are basically the components of the thermostatically controlled air cleaner. And I'm actually going to speak about one more piece here. Uh, this comes up in a lot of the forums, especially on Facebook that I'm a member of. Every once in a while, guys will ask, what is this ring around? And I, I, I see a lot of creative answers and a lot of creative guesses as to what it is or what it actually does. 
but I'm just going to take a second and explain it to all of you. This ring just contains activated charcoal. When the engine is hot and you shut it off, some fuel will evaporate from inside the float bowl of your carburetor. It then passes up and is held by this activated charcoal till the next time you start your car. When you start your car again, the suction will draw the fuel out back into the motor where the vapors are then burned. That's it, there's no mystery to it. You can take it off if you don't want it, um, but that's the actual true and correct answer as to what this ring is and does. Hey, now that we know what the system's made up of, let's take a look and make sure our system is working properly. So with your motor cold, you wanna remove any type of intake or tubing you have, go into your snorkel here, and you wanna start the car. Uh, take a look inside your snorkel. You'll see a valve. That valve should be closed, meaning it should, air should not be able to enter the snorkel. It should be drawing air up through the stove and into your intake. If your valve isn't closed when the motor's cold, you've got a problem. But the good news is this is a very simple system so we can figure it out in just a few seconds. All right, so you've started your cold motor and your valve isn't closing. You've looked inside and it's drawing air straight through the snorkel. It's not closed and directing air to pass up through this stove pipe. Well, good news is we can figure this out real fast because there are only two components in this system that could really give you problems. First thing you wanna do is disconnect the vacuum line itself and make sure you're getting vacuum at the valve. If you are getting vacuum at the valve, your valve is probably just stuck. Uh, the diaphragms in these valves rarely fail. They can because most of these are 30, 35, 40 years old, but I found that generally most of them are still good. So what that means is if you're getting vacuum here, you've probably got a stuck valve. Take a little WD-40, give it a good spray down, try to manipulate it as best you can, make sure the rod that runs from the actual diaphragm down to the flapper door isn't corroded or sticking and make sure it's lined up properly. That should solve most problems with these systems. But assuming you don't have vacuum at this hose that runs to the valve, next thing you wanna do is make sure you're getting vacuum to the actual system itself. So you wanna disconnect this, make sure you have vacuum around at the other end. If you are, then you probably got a problem with your little thermostatic switch inside the air cleaner. You're gonna have to hunt on eBay for one of those, but they can be replaced. Uh, both of these components, the actual valve itself and the little thermostatic switch are riveted inside the air cleaner. You can simply drill those rivets out, replace it with a new one, and you should be good to go. Hey guys, I hope I was able to explain a little more about one of these forgotten uh, emissions control systems on your 80s General Motors carbureted vehicle. Hopefully you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and maybe think about subscribing to the channel because we like to cover a lot of this stuff here. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.